Hello everyone and welcome back to WSO2 API Manager series. My name is Kumar Gaurav and I'm back with next video on WSO2 API Manager version 4. So this video is part 4 of overview of API MV4 portals. So let's get started. So far uh, we have covered about the publisher, dev portal and admin portal. If you have not, not checked those tutorials, kindly check the link in the description. We will now see the final part of the section that is overview of the Cartman portal, so called as a management console as well in this particular session. Carbon portal is basically used for core administration and configuration tasks such as user management, user store configuration, tenants management, service providers management and many more. So we will see uh, how we will be covering the following topics with respect to management portal uh, or the management console in this session. We will see about uh, the identity management like uh, user roles, user stores, claims, service providers and identity provider. We will check about the managing the email templates, key stores, consent purposes, YDC scopes, execution plans, how to uh, shut down or restart the server via management console resources uh, uh, browsing, metadata, data sources, server roles, multi-tenancy and finally the extensions part. So to access the carbon console we need to navigate localhost 9443 slash carbon for local deployment. Please replace the host name and the port number with your actual deployment. So once you have opened this link uh, the screen looks something like this. Now once we have done this successful login, the screen will look something like this. This is called as a carbon portal or the management console of WSO2 API manager. So we have talked enough about carbon console. So now let's begin the demo. Uh, carbon portal walkthrough. So we'll navigate to the localhost 9443 slash carbon. So here it opens the carbon console. Let's log in with the default credentials, which is admin admin. Okay. So now this, uh, the management console of WSO2 API manager or the carbon portal has opened successfully. So here are the different options that we'll be walking through out this session. So here are the topics that we have discussed that we will be covering in this session. So first we will talk about the identity. So under identity WSO2 API manager provides you can add or manage uh, users and their roles from this screen. So to see the list of users we have to click on the list then users. So as of now there are three users. Uh, these are the two default users provided by WSO2 API manager. This user has been created. So if you go to the roles, we can see these are the roles. So all uh, roles specific to internal slash the values which are WSO2 API manager default roles and uh, rest of the roles are getting created. Okay, so this is for the listing part for the users and roles. To create a new user, we have to use this screen, provide the username, password and the next screen will ask about the role assignment. Okay, So talking about adding addition of a new role, so we have to specify a role name and then we have to do the mapping. Uh, kindly note that addition of this roles doesn't in, uh, means that this role has been successfully uh, mapped to respective permissions. The role that has been created here, this must be created via the admin portal as well with respective permissions. So, okay. so let's say we create a role test. If you go to next screen, it will ask about the permissions. So we have to set the permissions. Then it will ask about the role assignment to the particular user. Okay. So this way you can use this uh, role assignment part. Okay. So we can also use the bulk import facility to import the users in bulk format. Okay, you can use this screen. This will be done through the primary user store. Okay, 
so this was all about the users then we have a user store so user store means uh, where are your users sitting where are your users located so by default WSO2 API manager provides the uh, internal user store where uh, the users are getting from where the our users are getting listed and getting saved to we can add a secondary user store okay via this screen okay so we have to provide the name domain name the description the LDAP configuration of the user store okay these are the the properties we have to specify then there are some optional values like uh, group search base entity entry object class and other parameters there are some advanced configurations as well okay so we have to use this screen to add a secondary user store what kind of user store it supports so it supports the read only read write ldap microsoft ad and jdbc user store so as of now with api manager 4.1 it supports four type of a user store so once this user store is getting added successfully it is getting listed in your secondary user stores configuration and those users are getting listed under the user section via the domain name so domain name slash you have to select the domain and then your users will be populated okay make sure that if you have the protocol as ldap s in that case you have to import the certificate of your ldap server to the client trust store of WSO2 API manager <coughs> okay so that completes the user store part now about the claims so these are the default claims available in WSO2 API manager to add a new claim we have to use add a screen and uh, sorry so we have to provide the claim dialect local claim external claim so by this way we can add a new claim okay so next we have a service provider so under service provider uh, we have a different service providers are getting listed okay so to add a new service provider we have to use this screen we can add a new service provider from here as well so these are the, the default uh, or the resident uh, service provider settings so as of now there is nothing okay so next we have identity provider so as of now there is no uh, identity provider registered with the uh, WSO2 API manager you can use add a screen to add a new identity provider okay these are the forms that uh, need to be filled successfully provided the connection and all the settings are valid then our service provider or uh, sorry identity provider is getting registered okay so that was all about the identity part then we have a uh, email templates so we can see a lot of email templates are getting here provided here like admin force password there are different scenarios based on that WSO2 API manager provides the email templates we can change or we can customize the template or even we can add a new template and save it to here okay so we can add a new template here as well okay via the add template screen okay so next we have like key stores so by default key store is w2 carbon.jks we can add a new key store from this screen as well we have to provide the key store name file the password the provider the key store type okay so that's about the key stores part the consent purposes so this is the default value and even we can add a new consent purpose from this screen okay so that's all about this uh, uh, consent purposes and the last one is the OIDC scopes so these are the default scopes provided by uh, WSO2 API manager to add a new OIDC scope we can use this screen this screen uh, where by providing the scope name and we have to add a uh, OIDC claim as well okay next we have execution plans so if we go to execution plans you can see we can manage this execution plan from here as well uh, these all are the execution plans which is that are the part of your synapse configuration uh, execution plans uh, we can add a new execution plans from here as well 
okay so for event part these are for the streaming apis so we are not going to cover this for now shutdown and restart of the server so for shutting down and restart of the server there is uh, this option is provided here so we can make a graceful shutdown or the force shutdown or graceful start or the force restart so we can use this management console to restart our server uh, without going to the terminal window and uh, using the command line interface okay next resource browsing so if we go to the resources go to the browse section so this is basically our system uh, files configurations that we can make the changes from here okay system config all the configurations with respect to identity email and then all this configuration so we can see and make the changes from here as and when required okay so we'll take a deeper dive for uh, a particular use case in later sessions so, but uh, this is the way we have to navigate or even we can search about the we, we can search about the particular content and it will be getting searched as well next we have metadata so under metadata we have list of apis so all those apis that are created uh, by the publisher portal are visible here too api documentation so let's say uh, whatever documents are that are added to the particular api are getting li listed here as well you can download the document from this screen too products and the product documents same way we have added for the apis and finally the providers if you have some any provider added it will be listed here too Okay, this is screen we can add uh, the respective the content to the API document product product document and the providers so that's covers the resource browsing metadata okay the data sources part for data sources we have to go to configure data sources so as of now we have the embedded h2 database so all these uh, five databases are shown here so to add a new data source we can use this screen we have to provide the database type description and all the, the database settings we have to test the connection and save this if we add a, a different database like uh, if we have configured our wso2 api manager with the ms sql or any rdbms database that databases will be listed here in that case server roles so the default server role is api manager that is we have this all in one uh, the setup of api manager uh, for server roles there is a documentation available uh, that is provided by wso2 so these are the different roles provided by wso2 for different use cases okay so for now you can see there is a different there is a default as well as there is a custom uh, server role available so so if we, if we add a new server rule it will be of a type of the default or the custom okay based upon the uh, environment and the settings okay so we have covered about the server rules as well now we'll talk about the multi-tenancy so multi-tenancy uh, is one of the powerful concept in wso2 manager api manager that facilitates the single infrastructure to be shared among the different uh, uh, like uh, the API uh, consumers or I say it should be of a different uh, uh, like uh, uh, API developers or the uh, there should be a logical separation between the different uh, departments so let me take a scenario like uh, we have set up WSO2 API manager and we would like to have a, a different group of developers to use a different uh, completely different URL and there should be a logical separation of those resources like APIs of uh, department A should not be visible to department B and so on to the next departments so the developer of department A should not be able to create an API in department B tenant and so on okay so 
in multi tenancy to add a new tenant we have to use this screen we have to provide the domain name uh, we have to use this plan this is by default the demo you have to provide an admin user credentials and once it is created uh, that user should be able to log into the carbon console and will be able to manage their tenant so to view the tenant this the super user can see the tenant from here only a super user which is admin user can create a tenant and manage the tenant from this screen can you note that the tenant deletion doesn't uh, uh, facility is not allowed from here as of now so to remove a tenant we can use the admin service provided by wso2 api manager to remove a tenant okay so we have covered about the tenant multi tenancy and uh, we'll talk about the extensions so so to add a extension we just need to either copy normally we do copy a jar file to the respective directory uh, but we can use this screen to upload a jar file to add a new uh, extension okay so this is the uh, you like browser based utility where you can upload your jar extension okay next uh, we have the artifacts type we they are as of now we have these are type of artifacts we can add a new artifact from this screen too if we talk about life cycle so life cycle is type of a uh, there are two types service life cycle and api life cycle so with api manager 4 we have uh, the services like uh, we can also create uh, uh, services via micro integrator profile and uh, it should be discoverable via api manager okay and uh, we can manage their life cycle from here as well as you can see the services state is development then we have a state which is testing and then test uh, state which is a production okay so these are the three states we can manage the states from here and for api lifecycle like we see create api created okay then we have api prototyped then we have a published okay so all or api block so all these options are available and can be managed from here as well okay so yeah so we have uh, covered all these topics with respect to the management console so here comes to the end of this session which covers the uh, overview of apmv port portals so we have finally covered all the portals which is a publisher dev portal admin portal and the carbon console okay so thank you very much so thank you very much for your time and stay tuned for my upcoming hands-on lab exercises on wso2 api manager version 4 you can refer to my blog links and telegram channel for useful contents and the official wso2 api manager documentation as well and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates